Glory to God. Praise the Lord. We give the glory to God. We give thanks for His great grace in our life. So we are here again to you, dear friends. We come to you through FB and YouTube. And hopefully you are finding there through the grace of God. So we want to bring unto you the message about the kingdom of God is not in the world but in power. This is what the world needs today, especially in our situation. So I invite you to the whole chapter of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 to 20. But we will get our message from verse 20 as uh, the key of our uh, uh, topic today. Now, this is about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not in word but in power in the state of spiritual kingdom of God so the kingdom of God exists today through the form of spiritual society and that is where we exist today so maybe the question is is all the people is within the kingdom of God let us know as we uh, go further in our lessons today there are uh, divisions that I want to explain within the kingdom of God there are workers in the kingdom number two there are citizens in the kingdom and number three there is a judge in the kingdom number four the kingdom of God is not in politics. So, we will uh, go and learn. First, the workers in the kingdom of God. Of course, the workers of the kingdom of God, they are the steward of God to do the work in the kingdom. As we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Let a man so account us as of the ministers of Christ and a steward of the promise of God. It is the ministers, servant of God, who do the stewardship in the kingdom of God. And it is a mystery, whereas the Jewish did not recognize Jesus when he came. So, so the kingdom of God today becomes a spiritual kingdom. And the Jewish is still waiting for the literal kingdom of God. Number two, the kingdom of God, there are chosen workers. It is God who ordained the workers to work within the kingdom of God. In verse 8, now ye are full. Now ye are rich. We have rich as king without us. You have reigned as king without us. And I will to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. In the world, they can reign by themselves. The people here on earth, they can put themselves by their effort to reign. But in the kingdom of God, it is God who will ordain. ordain who is the one deserving to reign. This is what uh, Paul uh, uh, would like to explain. I call, and I will to God ye did reign. That is what Paul uh, said. He want to explain that uh, anyone who is in the position, it should be because of the conscience of God. For him to have the position to reign and authority. Number three, God ordained only the people one as a steward. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. Moreover, it is required any steward that a man be found faithful. So it is an importance that to become a steward in the kingdom of God. 
must be a faithful man. But if in case there are unfaithful ministers, let us say, or what else, who such like a ministers, but seems they are not people, people, maybe they are not ordained as stewardship in the kingdom of God. Or they become unpitiful outside the kingdom of God. Just to make it clear that the workers in the kingdom of God are people and righteous men. Number four, minister had all the sacrifice of brewing souls in the kingdom of God. Yes, we read in verse 10, we are full for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. And live work, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless them. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we threat also. We are made as the field of the world and are the obscuring of all things unto this day. So, Apostle Paul noted here how they suffer in preaching the gospel of Christ as they are steward within the kingdom of God. Ministers, pastors are such like a mother, like a father who are willing to suffer any difficulties to support their family. Maybe a mother here, a father here, work for the beneficiary of their family. Some of them are in the government, but some of them are laboring in different work. Some of them also work in abroad as teams. And they suffered a lot of suffering. They become poor by their employee and they become weak. They are despised. They starve. They are nicked, buffeted. There are certain also ministers who become homeless. There are also certain ministers who have to labor for their financial needs. And some of them are reviled, some of them persecuted. They are defamed, they are mistreated. To consider them as a guilty in the society. There are a lot of sufferings that uh, suffered by all ministers. That is the price of being a stewardship in the kingdom of God. Just to draw one soul inside the kingdom of God. No matter how suffering that all the ministers, that all the stewards, steward inside the kingdom of God will suffer the importance to draw one soul to become citizens in the kingdom of God. The ministers also become a spectacular person. We read in verse 4, For I think that God had set forth us the apostle last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made spectacle unto the world, angels and to men. Imagine that. 
We are more than the celebrity in Hollywood because the whole world are watching the ministers. Their eyes keep on watching the servants of God who are working inside the kingdom of God. To my dear ministers of God, we cannot hide ourselves in the eyes of this world. They keep on watching on us how our life is going on. But praise the Lord, there's nothing they can see but the glory of God. How God deal with us. His sikina glory is on top to our family. Praise the Lord. Even their eyes focus into our life. But God allowed him to see the glory of God. That is what I can see. That is the price of being a minister inside the kingdom of God. God will clothe them with his glory. Glory to God. Number two, the citizens in the kingdom of God. The citizens in the kingdom of God had a better life than people who live without in the kingdom. Let us read. We quote the words of St. Paul in verse 10. But ye are wise in Christ. But ye are strong. Ye are honorable. Imagine that. A person who become citizens in the kingdom of God. They have the best life. Because the best life is found in the kingdom of God. Where there is peace and joy forever. Unlike the life in this world which is not, which is no assurance in the future. And because of that, they commit suicide. That is what others are doing. We heard in the news, some are depressed. Some committed suicide. Some killed their own family. It's because they are not inside the kingdom of God. So if you want to have the best life, come into the kingdom of God. And you will find the best life that had God prepared for you. Number two. The citizens in the kingdom of God were born through the gospel of Christ. Let us read in verse 15. For thou ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. The citizens in the kingdom of God were born through the gospel of Christ. There is no other way to enter in the kingdom of God but to be born in the gospel of Christ, which is the gospel of salvation. So, we cannot become a citizen in the kingdom of God through the book of Muhammad, through the book of Buddhism, or any kinds of books full of wisdom in this world. It's only the Bible, it's only the gospel of Christ, the gospel of salvation that made us to be born and become a citizens in the kingdom of God. That's very clear. The lifestyle in the kingdom is deserved or derived from Christ. In verse 17, my way which be in Christ. That is uh, Paul said. My ways which be in Christ as I teach every word in every church. So Apostle Paul adapt the pattern of life that he learned from Christ. And that also what we should do being a citizen in the kingdom of God, our lifestyle is the lifestyle of Christ. We learn the pattern of our life from the pattern of 
Jesus Christ. We are not living inside the kingdom of God. Like a celebrity in the movie, like a prestigious businessman or any prestigious leaders in the world, but as citizens in the kingdom of God, his lifestyle is the lifestyle of Jesus Christ. Number four, the ground of our decision should be in accordance to the will of the Lord. I will read in verse 19. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord's will. And I will know that the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. We repeat the word, if the Lord's will. Apostle Paul wants to visit the Corinthians people, but still he waits. If God will permit him to go. That is how we make our decision. I do not know what is your problem. What matters you need to make a decision. But the important is. And every decision that we will make. Should be in accordance to the will of God. Their friends don't make a decision when you are in emotion of angry. When you are in doubt. When there is no peace in your hearts. To avoid more errors. Anyway, there are some cases that we are in the times of difficult situation. Critical situation. In those times, it is hard to make a decision. But maybe what we should do is we better pray and trust God. And allow God to do His own work by His own mysterious way for that matters. But if we as citizens living inside the kingdom of God, we have to learn to base our decision in accordance to the will of the Lord. That is very important today. Do not make a hasty decision that you might tell you. Wait the will of God. That is uh, what we make our decision. Number three, about the kingdom of God, there is one judge. In verse four, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not here justified, but he that judges me is the Lord. So in the kingdom of God, there is only one judge, and he is a righteous judge. Unlike the judges here on earth, especially those judges who receive a under the table, but Jesus Christ is the righteous judge. He will judge every one of us by his righteous. So don't worry. If the people won't believe on you, but you do not have commit any wrong they are just accusing you don't worry God is a righteous God he will judge you in according to your innocence glory to God let us continue no secret in the kingdom to the judge We cannot hide anything to the judge. He knows everything. We read in verse 4. 
Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsel of the heart. Counsel, it should be counsel. And then shall every man have praise of God. The judge in the kingdom of God, you cannot hide anything unto him. He knows everything. Every hiding things, every secret in your hearts, he knows. I do not know, dear friends, what secret do you have now? Remember, God is omniscient. He knows your secret. Maybe your secret is God, or I do not know. But if in case your your secret, our secret, is not God, then we better forget. Now, forget now. Don't wait the time to be revealed. It is more uh, a worse if we have a bad secret then time will come that it will be revealed but if we have the good secret god be reward every one of us even those the people knows what we have done in the lord there are a lot of people don't want the people to know what they are doing good inside the kingdom of God. But God knows those. God knows your heart, your love. What you did here in the kingdom of God, God knows all those. God will judge you and give you praise when time will come. So, of judging its other we are not in the authority to do that in verse 4 therefore judge nothing before the time judge nothing in verse 6 not to think of men above that which is written we will not uh, go over what was written in the law, in the scripture? Sometimes, if we judge other people, that means that we put ourselves higher than the others. That is what uh, that means of judging each other. We are more higher than them. We are more good than them. And that is the starting of troubles so we better not do judging each other to avoid any dispute to avoid any uh, troubles in our society but in the kingdom of god there's only one who will judge in us so the people inside the kingdom of God has no authority to make a judgment to their fellow dual people, to their fellow inhabitants in the kingdom of God. Number four, the kingdom of God is not in the politics, but it is in the power of God. In verse 20, for the kingdom of God is not word, but in power. That is the kingdom of God. The world today, the problem of the world today is how to produce a vaccine to solve the problem of coronavirus. That is the wisdom of the world. But do you not know that inside the kingdom of God, has the power to solve that problems about corona or COVID-19 virus. A person who live inside the kingdom of God is no longer problem about COVID-19. 
Because there is power inside the kingdom of God. Because the one who reigns inside the kingdom of God, there's, there's no other than the Almighty God. And all things are possible. God will solve this problem through a divine power, through a divine healing. The scientists still keep on searching, but God already solved this problem, COVID-19 virus. The only way for us to do is to believe God, to trust God that He will do the miracle healing to every patient of COVID. Not only the patients of COVID, but even those who are suffering and all kinds of disease, if they trust in believing God, God will solve their problem to bring healing unto them. And not only for that, there is a great changes of life inside the kingdom of God. The unseen people will be seen. No one can enter in the kingdom of God who is not saved. We can enter into the kingdom of God when we are God saved. So the power of God's kingdom inform us, introduce us how we enter into the kingdom of God. It is the gospel of Christ. It is the gospel of salvation. If we, if we receive that, this gospel of salvation, then we are belongs to the kingdom of God. Inside the kingdom of God, an old life will become a new. A risky will gain assurance. A foolishness will become wise. Poorness will come to abundance. The propile law person will become honorable. From trouble to peace, that is, that is what will happen inside the kingdom of God. From sorrow to joy. I've already experienced to have a great sorrow, but thanks God. Because I am in the kingdom of God, all sorrow over God. From death to life, from corruption to forever, and even this old earth in heaven will pass away, but the kingdom of God will stand forever. I do not know what is your problem today, dear Prince. Maybe this is good time to invite Jesus Christ in our life that Jesus Christ will bring us inside the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, the message today is about your kingdom. That your kingdom is not in word, but it is in your power. Our world today had a lot of troubles, especially this pandemic, COVID-19, that victims, many people, there are more than 2 million people now who are affected of this coronavirus. And thousands will die. Most gracious heavenly father, in your kingdom, the corona virus cannot enter. This pandemic has no power inside your kingdom. So I pray, dear God, to all people who are outside in your kingdom, that they will come also to be a citizens in your kingdom. We do not know how, but we pray, dear God, by your Holy Spirit to work in them, to convince them, to believe in thy gospel, and accept Jesus Christ as the Savior of their life, and they will be also a part of your kingdom. 
so that their life will be saved from this present pandemic. That is our prayer, dear God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.